Good afternoon. We welcome you to an educational program on countywide property tax reassessment, sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania Economy League, and the University of Scranton Political Science Department. My name is Diana Dakey, our local league's current vice president. Just a little bit about the League of Women Voters. The League is nonpartisan, which means that we do not support or oppose any political party or candidate. The mission of the League of Women Voters is to promote political responsibility through the informed and active participation by citizens in their government. We encourage you to join the League of Women Voters. You can go to our website, www.lwvlackawanna.org, or take a membership form home with you from our table. A little bit about upcoming events. Uh, they are posted on the board over there, so you don't have to uh, take notes. Um, on Wednesday, October 25th, we will be holding a debate with candidates for Scranton mayor at 6 o'clock, followed by a debate for, um, between candidates for Lackawanna County District Attorney at 7.15. On Wednesday, November 1st, we will be holding a debate with candidates for Scranton City Council at 6 o'clock, followed by a debate of candidates for Scranton School District School Director at 7.15. Both events will be right here. Um, of course, the most important event is Election Day, Tuesday, November 7th. Don't forget to vote. A sample ballot can be found at the Lackawanna County Elections website. If you still need to register, you must complete the process no later than October 10th in order to vote this November. See information for links where, uh, where and you can do that on our uh, board here uh, on your way out. A few procedural items, please. Um, please turn off or silence your cell phones or other devices. And be aware that it is our policy that no person is allowed to use or edit any media from a League of Women Voters event. Any use of the media requires the express written permission from the League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County. No excerpts or sound bites may be taken from this program. Um, the uh, program will be recorded, so you can watch it again, or you can tell your friends to uh, go to our website at lwvlackawanna.org for the link. You will also find rebroadcast times at ECTV's website. So check online uh, the e for the ECTV schedule for regular rebroadcasts uh, on Electric City TV channel 19, which might be listed as government access channel in your lineup. Uh, also, the League of Women Voters of Lackawanna County has posted reference material on this subject on our website. We have links to reports and of, um, to uh, reports, various reports, and to other counties who recently completed reassessment, so that you can see additional other county-developed explanatory materials on this subject. I would like to introduce our speaker. Gerald Cross is executive director of the Pennsylvania Economy League Central Division. Uh, and also with him today is Lynn Shedlock, the communications director for the Pennsylvania Economy League. The Pennsylvania Economy League, founded in 1936, is a nonprofit, nonpartisan public policy research and education organization supported by private sector memberships with offices in Wilkes-Barre, Harrisburg, Philadelphia, and Pittsburgh. So I will turn the program over to Gerald. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. It's uh, nice to be. It's nice to be among kindred souls with the uh, League of Women Voters, as uh, the emphasis on nonpartisan, nonpolitical. Uh, we share an interest in civic edu civic leadership, education, and I hope that after this afternoon's presentation and questions, we'll have a clearer understanding of just what the citizens are being asked to decide as a, on the ballot question this November. I'll be using a slideshow, but I'll be uh, talking directly to the audience. And uh, if you pay attention to the slides, you'll see where we're going. But the, the talk itself should uh, comprise more information than is, on the, than is on the slide. Let's talk about assessment and why that's important. A lot of people uh, consider mills as the end all and be all of local government taxation. 
But a millage rate or the rate that the local government sets for taxes really has no value in and of itself. It's part of an equation. It, it's no more of value than the equation two times two is four. Either one of those numbers can change, the result will still be four. So a millage is used in conjunction with assessments. And assessments are used to determine property value of the property being taxed. In Pennsylvania, assessments are set by the county. The county governments have responsibility for setting assessments. So in a sense, how much tax revenue a municipality receives from their tax rate, their millage, is a direct result of the assessed valuation of a property. If properties are higher or lower than average, the millage has to go up to achieve the same amount of property tax revenue for the government's purposes. You can see that it's important that fair and equitable taxation ensures that assessments be fair and equitable. And by fair and equitable, we mean that the property tax burden is spread fairly among all taxpayers based on the ability to pay or the value of their property. In Pennsylvania, we like to tax wealth in the form of earned income, personal income, and property. What's also important about equity and fairness in taxation is the Pennsylvania Constitution requires that we do this. There is a clause in the Constitution that says taxes must be uniform upon the same class of subjects. What that means is if you're a property owner, you have to have the same millage rate as every other property owner. There are no exceptions for a higher rate of taxation on single family homes or on commercial industrial properties. That's another reason assessments are so important. If the assessments aren't fair and equitable, you'll have a uniform uh, tax rate and each person will have paid different rates of taxation for essentially the same government services. The government doesn't ask you the value of your house when they, pro when they provide services. They don't ask the value of your house when they plow your street. They simply plow your street with the revenue produced from property tax revenue. Assessments themselves are crucial to Pennsylvania's local government system because our system in Pennsylvania relies so heavily on property taxes. It's one of the main sources of revenue along with earned income tax for municipals and school districts, and it's the sole source of property tax, nearly the sole source of property tax for counties. In Lackawanna County, property taxes are 100% of the county's total taxes. It might be 99.5, Lynn and I always talk about it, but it's probably 100% uh, for, for uh, the tax, total taxes collected locally. In municipalities, it's about 40%. Uh, oftentimes, the earned income tax is less than the uh, property tax, but between the two taxes, you're almost 75 to 80% of all municipal taxes. So you see that municipalities themselves must rely on the, the uh, millage uh, and the taxes produced by the uh, assessments and millage calculation. School districts are 77% of total taxes are produced by the property tax. If you think about the distribution, it's easy to understand how taxpayers are sensitive to uh, millage increases and tax increases. But those are the three, the three areas that are most affected by the millage rate. How much money was collected in 2015 in Lackawanna County through the property tax? School districts collected 149 million out of the total 260 million collected. Imagine the, uh, the revenue generated from that if that was projected onto a business, that's a very large business. So obviously we have large effects from a, a fair and equitable system or the results of one that isn't fair and equitable. County governments, about 23%, almost $60 million. And municipalities altogether, I forget there's 40 some municipalities in the 40, is uh, $52 million or 20% of the total bill, a property tax bill in the county. What are the impacts if the assessments get stale? or old, as we say. Uh, Lackawanna County has a uh, base year, I believe, of 1968, which means that theoretically all the properties are valued back to a base year of 1968 and adjusted for their value today. When assessments get out of whack, as, it's, as it is by measurement in Lackawanna County, if their assessments are not conducted regularly, 
inequities in the tax base development uh, develop. Inequities mean people of the same value property or the same structure could be paying widely different taxes because the assessed valuation hasn't kept pace with market value or one property has changed hands more frequently than, it, than the other. The overall tax base will decrease if assessments aren't kept up. Market values will change, but assessments generally do not if, they're, if the system is not regularly updated. And the overall tax base for the municipality falls, means there's less money available from the tax base, which means millages have to go up. Remember the equation, two times two is four. If, if, the, if two becomes a one because it's decreasing in value, the other number has to be four. The millage has to be increased. So while everyone feels the impact of millages because it's a local decision, it's really a function of a decreasing tax base or ineffective re uh, assessment practices. When you have less tax revenue in Pennsylvania, you decrease government services. It makes it harder to provide services. It's generally uh, affected most locally in public works, police and fire. However, school districts, if they're not generating enough property taxes, particularly under this current school code where you have uh, millage increases limited, the assessments become critical. Uh, an uh, an out-of-date assessment market simply strangles the tax revenue that needs to be produced and what happens? Services are cut or deferred. For local governments, you have to levy more mills so you make people angrier. You're simply levying more mills up to the local limit uh, for municipalities. Boroughs and cities are close to 30 mills. Some townships are, are lower but there's our state caps on millages. So you can see if the assessments aren't growing and the municipalities aren't able to raise their millages, something has to give. It's less money. Earned income tax is, is limited. The amount of money they can raise by percentage is limited. So you have these increasing pressures on local governments. When they have to raise mills, the citizens are upset. When they reach their cap, there's no longer money from millage. It's from the growth of assessments. If assessments don't grow, revenue doesn't grow. Just as your household, if your revenue isn't growing, your expenses aren't growing. Or you're doing other things that you would want to do, uh, use credit, or just cut back on what you're doing. You see that in local governments if you're attentive to what local governments provide. Infrastructure suffers, police staffing suffers, uh, staffing in the municipal building suffers. If you can't achieve fair and equitable assessments through an accurate assessment system, naturally occurring growth, the value is, is not there, and the assessment equity disappears. As people have different values of properties, they're getting the same government services, but if you're not accurately capturing the increase in growth, some people are paying more in taxes, some people are paying less, but they're getting the same services. And that's essentially the inequality of not having an accurate uh, assessment practice. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. There are, there, there's a lot of, I, I, I want to say anecdotal knowledge, there's a lot of knowledge about uh, reassessment. Some of it's true, some of it's simply uh, conventional wisdom gone awry. Center for Rural Pennsylvania tried to do some studies about seven years ago on this. They ranked urban and rural counties based on the uh, date of their last assessment and they tried to uh, correlate that with commonly thought of results from inequality or older assessment practices. They found that the amount of revenue generated per mill, that is how much money per um, thousand dollars from the assessed value, how much money over time, the farther away you came from reassessment from, in, in this case it would be 1968, they found a correlation was pretty, was moderate that you decrease the revenue generated per mill. If you increase, if you decrease the revenue generated per mill, you have to raise the mills. You have to generate more mills. More mills is a local municipal argument. It's a political decision. Taxpayers see that as the result. They don't see the other side of the equation that distance from a reassessment or inaccurate assessments makes the millages go up because the value of the assessments isn't keeping pace. The equity of the property tax system, that is getting the same level of government services and paying based on the same level of wealth decreases. That correlation is very strong. 
Obviously, the farther you go away, the difference in market practices, the different changes in both commercial, industrial, and uh, residential, people improving, not improving, selling, not selling, market value changes in neighborhoods, those things all occur over time independent of the assessment system, and it's incumbent on the county to keep those assessments in pace with the market changes. If it isn't being done, equity suffers. County unemployment rate. There is a, a moderate correlation that the unemployment rate increases in counties that have very old assessments. That's counterintuitive in the sense that, uh, well, Northeast PA, perhaps government's the biggest employer, uh, and less money for the government is less jobs, but try, quite frankly, if you think about it, the county unemployment rate could be impacted by commercial and economic development that is depressed or, or made harder by inadequate taxation policies. Remember, if the millages have to be higher because the assessments are weaker, those people that have more active development, commercial and industrial, are paying a higher millage rate on higher valued properties. Because as inequity creeps in, those properties that are more often improved or developed have higher values. Those that, have, that are older and perhaps haven't been improved have much lower values, but the millage is the same. So the higher millage impacts new improvements much harder in a tax base, makes it harder to finance those improvements, makes it harder for a business to turn a profit. County median housing value was found by the Center for Rural PA and Urban Counties to be a weak correlation. There was often talk about reassessment causes taxes to go up, makes people lose their home, causes the property values to fall, and therefore we'll have a lot of homes for sale and values will fall because people are paying more in taxes. That correlation doesn't seem to be there. If an assessment is fair, up to date and accurate, you are paying the taxes based on what your property is worth, based on the adjusted millage. And we'll get into that. So you see the impact of a, uh, of a reassessment does not necessarily uh, impact what citizens commonly think of as their taxes. That is the millage rate versus how much they're paying every year. There's another impact. If you don't assess regularly, what happens to the tax base is it loses connection with the actual market value. Market value is measured by a, in a state agency using county uh, data based on hands-off sales. About every two years, the Commonwealth State Tax Equalization Board audits counties. So there's a rotating audit done uh, of recent market sales. Now they have a formula that eliminates family sales where it's transferred for a dollar or where there's uh, not hands off, not arm's length transactions. So the market value is looked at for what the property was sold for versus what the county had it assessed at. Those, those changes are calculated every year and published by the uh, Commonwealth. They've been doing this since the 1950s. That makes it easy for us to change, or to compare rather, the change in market versus assessed value over the years. Remember, if the county was keeping up with market value, and let's assume it was 100%, although counties can have a percentage less than 100, let's assume it was based on market value and assessed value being equal, and assume that the county kept up with this over the last 25 years, or 21 years, there would have been a change in assessed value roughly equivalent to the change in market value. That's not what we find when we look at numbers. These are the school districts in Lackawanna County. You'll notice the top bar Valley View had increase in market value, 160% or thereabouts. But according to the county, the tax base only grew by about 45% or 43%. Scranton is probably the most uh, dramatic example. Property values in Scranton, based on the measurement of the Commonwealth for actual sales, doubled in 21 years, 100% increase. According to the county tax office, or the assessment office, the assessed valuation has changed by about 3%, 2%. We can go through the list of all the other school districts, but you see uniformly 
there is a, it far outstrips the growth in market value, far outstrips the growth in assessed value. And if assessment values were tracking market carefully, you would expect those bars to be much closer. Instead, you can see the graph. The graph will give you the dramatic change between the two. What does that mean? What it means in, we took uh, two examples here, Riverside and Scranton. What it means that revenue today from property taxes at the same millage rate, without increasing mills, the same millage rate as of today, the Riverside School District would have received 200% higher taxes if market value tracked assessed valuations. Instead, it's 67% higher. That's not good news because the millage had a rise to make up that 200% with that 130% gap. You see the difference? If assessed values are shrinking or staying the same, millages must go up to fill that gap that we saw in the prior graph. Revenue in Scranton today, and, and the school district of course is the same uh, footprint as the city, so you can apply the same rule to the city's uh, general fund. It would be 101% higher compared to only 2.7% of assessment growth. Virtually no growth in 23 years. Think about Scranton City alone, their millage history over the last 10 years. I think they've gone up 140%. Now that's a raise in taxes on an individual level based on millage, but it's barely keeping track, keeping pace with what the market has been doing. So if taxes were fair and equitable and tracking market, the increase in wealth would be taxed equitably and fairly and citizens that have older properties or newer properties wouldn't be subject to the inequality of higher millages. Now, the important point of this comparison is you cannot recapture this revenue. Reassessment will not magically double Scranton's revenue. Reassessment will not give Riverside that missing piece. This money is gone forever. Now, some people may say that's good. The less money the government gets, the better. But remember, the less government money that's brought in is the less improvements that have not occurred over the last 21 years if you believe the government acts efficiently and rationally in the face of having to raise taxes. Most local officials I know do not like to raise taxes. Now let's talk a little bit about the measures. I could say the uh, property taxes in Scranton are inequitable. I could show you how the assessment doesn't keep track with market values, but who am I? I'm just another opinion in Northeastern PA. The Commonwealth, however, because of the system of taxation in Pennsylvania, does measure how different market values are from assessments. They provide a common level ratio, which essentially is the ratio of market to, per to uh, assess values for each local government for the prior calendar year. So the most recent numbers come out in July, so we have the most recent numbers from 2016 were available this July. If you understand a ratio of 100% means that assessed value equals market value, you can make the connection. So if your house is worth $100,000, this county will say your assessed value is $100,000. Any difference from that is the difference between what you're assessed at and what the market says your property is worth. On a general basis, these numbers are calculated for every municipality and they're online at the uh, State Tax Equalization Board's website but they also provide an aggregate number for the county. So that, and if you look at it, most of the numbers, 15, 16, 14% for municipals. So the county's average holds up. Lackawanna's number was 15%. So on average, a property of market value of $100,000 is assessed at $15,000. Now there's an interesting side note to this. If you're curious as to the level of your assessments, how, how they track with market, and in a sense how they track with equity because you're paying taxes supposedly based on the value of your property. Our constitution wants it to be uniform. That ratio calculates to about 6.67 times. So take your tax bill, look at your assessed valuation, multiply by 6.67 times. That should roughly equal your market value. And I mean roughly, I mean it will be within tens of thousands. But that should roughly give you a guide of where your equity stands on that scale. 
If your assessments are very low and your market value is very high, you're on the benefit side of the inequity. Conversely, if your uh, market, market value is closer to the calculated assessed valuation, you're fair. And if you're way over, that is your, your value, your property is calculated is more than you can get or, or higher than your neighborhood, you, you are on the other side of the inequity situation. The uniform millage applied is making different people pay different rates of taxes on the same level of wealth. There's another number, another statistical uh, measure that's used. It's a little harder to understand, but it's called the coefficient of dispersion. And dispersion means how far something is from the mean, how far away it is from what's average. And we will assume average means a, a, a measure of equity. This coefficient, <coughs> pardon me, this coefficient is also calculated by the Commonwealth. Uh, it's been calculated more, less frequently than the common level, because common level is critical to school district taxation. And the last time the Commonwealth calculated this on a statewide basis for every county was in 2011. This measure is in a, in a sense of uh, percentages or, or numbers away from the average. And the average assumed is, is an accurate assessment. If you go to 10 to 15 percent of a common level, I'm sorry, of a coefficient dispersion measure, that's considered good. You'll hear oftentimes counties are not forced to reassess or the constitutional requirement allows plus or minus 15 percent. So if your home is valued at $100,000, constitutionally an assessment from 85,000 to 115,000 means you're equitable. It's fair, there's no, you have no real cause to appeal and you may not win an appeal because you know, you're taxed fairly according to our constitutional law of benefit. A coefficient dispersion of 20%, 20 plus or minus, or 20 points plus or minus, is, is still acceptable range. It's still, within the, it's still considered within the, uh, the range you'd get with market changes, market, market flex flexibility, distance between assessments, you know, so 20 is okay. When you get over 30, you start to see real increased inequity disparity, okay? In 2011, Lackawanna County's measure was 60.74. Luzerne, which had an assessment in 2009, their 2011 coefficient dispersion was 23.8. Based on that measure alone, Luzerne County's assessment for property tax is equitable, it's acceptable, it's trending a little bit away, and Luzerne has been watching that carefully, but it's still acceptable. That 23 is, is, a, is an acceptable range. Look at Luzerne before the assessment. It was 41. I believe, I, I, I may be wrong, but I think Luzerne, Lackawanna, and Blair were the threest, the, the highest uh, coefficient dispersions pre-2009 uh, pre assessment. So Luzerne, had seen a large inequity in their tax base. And Luzerne recently had a reassessment in 2009. Luzerne makes a nice little model because it shares the same neighborhood, the same section of the state, roughly the same economy, same nature of taxpayers, probably the same mix of high level and, and uh, uh, lower, uh, lower uh, property value homes. So uh, the people in Luzerne County, if you ask them, if you have friends that, that live in Luzerne County, ask them honestly what they feel the impact from the 2009 assessment was. The biggest uh, complaints in Luzerne County over time after appeals, the, the 18 months or two years that the appeal process worked as well, were from those property owners that had uh, a large increase in property value in those areas that were developed uh, more frequently, the resort areas, the lakes, and the uh, larger townships. Those people that had homes prior to the development, those values really went up, and the assessments caught up with them. Generally speaking, though, and I live in Luzerne County, while my taxes went up, they weren't onerous. And the equity built in has allowed local governments in Luzerne County to raise millages when necessary. It's, it's surprising how little millages are increased on a yearly basis in Luzerne County because the natural assessment growth is being captured. Hazel Township is now the biggest assessed value municipality in Luzerne County, bigger than Wilkesbury. But for years, Wilkesbury was the leader and Hazel Township was lower. But the reassessment brought into focus the actual market conditions in Luzerne County. So 
it's, it's interesting to watch the budget. Uh, every November, people like me watch our budget news stories, and it's a big deal. Well, it's, it's, an, it's not a big deal when they don't raise taxes. And when they do raise taxes, it's in fractions of mills because the assessed valuation is large enough to generate revenue from a fair base. So pay attention to Luzerne. It's a good example. It's what they call a natural experiment. It works really well for Lackawanna County voters to understand. Back to coefficient dispersion. What does it mean when Lackawanna County has a 60% coefficient? If you took three similar properties, went over to the courthouse and you had predetermined the three similar properties and you pulled the tax assessments for those three properties, chances are one property owner is paying taxes up to 60% over what their property value should allow them to pay. It's an inequitable assessment. One property owner could be paying up to 60% less. Everybody likes a bargain, but you know, only if you're on the receiving end. So 60%, some people are getting 60% discounts in their property taxes from an equitable level. And one property owner probably is paying the average, probably paying the mean, it's probably paying what their proper value should be. That's in a nutshell, numerically, what we talk about in equity in the tax base. People are paying different dollar values for same government services for the same valued property. That becomes inequitable. The big question of the day, we hear it, <laughs> we hear it every time when, when the topic of assessment comes up. I hope you realize now the uh, role of assessments in whether taxes go up or not. It's part of that whole equation I was explaining. Will taxes go up? Will my taxes go up? I don't know. I'm not sure you know unless you uh, look at your tax bill and understand the market value of your home. But there's an important caveat, and it, it sort of sets my old gray hair on fire when I hear someone says, taxes are going to go up upon reassessment. What is lacking in the public's consciousness is a state requirement that millages must go down. There's an anti-windfall provision in the assessment law. You have to lower your millages in the year following an assessment to achieve revenue neutrality. Now that's not revenue neutral on your bill. Your bill could go up or down depending on your level of inequity or your level of benefit for prior, prior inequity. But overall, taxes cannot be raised more than 110%. So if a municipality re revenue is $100,000 the year prior to the reassessment, they must lower their millage rate to achieve no more than $110,000. If for some reason they need more money, they can go to court, and the court has to have a hearing, but the leeway allowed is 110%. And if you don't hit that, citizens are allowed to challenge the, uh, the, the municipality's millage rate in court. So your tax bill, no one in this room can say with certainty what their tax bill will be until the reassessment is done because it's a new valuation, untied to the past. The entire property records are discarded. It's a new snapshot at a period in time. And then that snapshot, that gross valuation, will then determine the level of millage. In Luzerne, on average, millages had to be reduced by 25 times. The county, when the uh, millages were calculated, the, when the assessed valuation was finally calculated, uh, I think the base year was 2008. 2009, they made it uh, uh, effective. They sent letters out to all the municipalities based on the individual results, and they told them how much they must divide their millage by to remain revenue neutral. Nearly all of them are 25. Some were 23, some were higher, depending on the level of inequity. But it wasn't tied to dollars. They didn't say, oh, you collected $100,000, so here's your new millage rate. No, they said, your assessments have gone up 25 times. You will lower your millage rate 25 times. So a municipality with a 25 mil rate before assessment has a one mil rate in Luzerne. So you can see the relative value of a mill strictly depends on assessments. Although it's nice to say, well, I pay less mills or more mills, it truly means how fair your assessments are when you want to compare mills. Your taxes might go up. We don't know that. You don't know it either, but I can tell you one thing. In an equitable uh, system, in an equitable system of taxation, a modest house is assessed modestly. $50,000 market value house will probably be assessed 50, 45, 55, somewhere in that range, 
because it's not an exact precise process. You're not getting a free market appraisal for every house that you could take and get a home equity loan on. It's a process called mass appraisal, but it's mass appraisal on a neighborhood area. It's mass appraisal on a market area. It's not the mass appraisal for Lackawanna County and we want more taxes, so we're gonna tax, we're gonna use the higher value neighborhoods. It is strictly, and it's, it's controlled mathematically by uh, assessment officials, the firms that do it. So a modest house will be a modest house and it will be subject to a much lower millage rate. A McMansion, or someone who has a more valuable property than the neighbors, will pay more, and that's only fair. They're getting the same level of services, they have a higher valued house, they will pay more if, well they'll pay an appropriate value of a McMansion, I shouldn't say we're not, <laughs> uniformity is still effective. A, a more expensive house in a neighborhood will pay taxes at a level commensurate with the value of that property. Over assessed value properties, the inequity people will be paying for, uh, they will no longer pay and subsidize the under assessed valuations. Because now when you have inequities, you have a system where, I'll use an example for city of Scranton, there's 20 some single family homes in Scranton assessed at $1,000, according to the county. There's some that are assessed at $80, which is amazing. Uh, I think we counted 21, we're $1,000 or less. At the single millage rate in Scranton, that's about $50 a year in property taxes. So there is an equity there. There's also errors in the system. Many errors have crept into the system over time. Uh, the highest value uh, property that's called single family in Scranton is in reality a uh, commercial property. They never changed the description of the property because demolition occurred, changed hands, it still is listed as a single family property. Assessment rules along, allow commercial properties to have a different rate of valuation. But since that's a single family home, that can't be contributing to the tax base on an equitable basis. Errors and underassessed and overassessed should be eliminated with an accurate assessment. Well, equity is all well and good, and Lynn and I always say, uh, equity is all well and good as long as my piece of the pie is bigger. So what about economic impact? Why should we do this as a municipality, as a county, as citizens? There is an economic impact to outdated assessments. There's a, county dis there's a county competition disadvantage. Older counties with older assessed valuations have higher millage rates. The formula is math that can't be changed. However, most of the world doesn't understand Pennsylvania local government. Most of the world, most location companies, site location companies, they're familiar with millages. Everyone knows what that is. But not everyone realizes we have 2,400 and some municipalities in Pennsylvania that can levy millages plus 67 counties, 500 school districts. Everybody has a millage, you know? It's like Christmas around here. So when a location company looks at a millage, they think of it in terms of what they know. Usually it's a countywide millage providing countywide services. In some cases, it's a statewide millage distributed locally. Not in Pennsylvania. So if you have Lackawanna County, at an old assessment rate. Lackawanna necessarily has higher millages. Neither good nor bad, depending on the equity, but it has a higher millage rate. Luzerne Municipality, across the border, would have a one mill rate. Someone's looking at that uh, comparison, they may very well cross the line with the assumption that they're getting a one mill rate versus a 28 mill rate. But in the relative, relative values could be the same. They won't understand that, but the county will look bad competitively to surrounding counties. And remember, Monroe's had a recent reassessment. Luzerne, I think, I forget when Carbon is, but it wasn't that long ago. You've got some recent reassessments surrounding the area, plus Susquehanna. Outdated assessments invite in appeals. You can't appeal your electric bill. You can't appeal your water bill. You know, you get your bill from uh, cable TV, you gripe, but you don't appeal it. Property taxes you can appeal. If you think it's unfair, you appeal it. So larger, higher value businesses have an incentive to appeal. They're the recipients of the inequity in the system. So they have a court right, they have a constitutional right to get a fair valuation. They can appeal their value. And they do. There's a cottage industry of attorneys that, uh, that solicit business and it's, a, it's constitutionally mandated that it's uniform appeal your assessment if it makes financial uh, benefit, if it makes financial sense. 
What happens then is you reduce those values, millages go up. So everyone else that hasn't appealed gets a higher millage rate, gets more inequity, pays a higher tax. You lose revenue when you have a successful appeal. The law allows three years of captured revenue. You can go back three years. The town has to pay that money back from three years of overtaxation if it's proven that the, the assessed valuation was too high. There's another economic impact, and, and I used to think I used to think this in, on an anecdotal basis because uh, you're a homeowner and sometimes that siding job is expensive and all it does is make the neighbors have a pretty house to look at and, and you really want a new kitchen and you want a new plumbing and so you spend some money on the inside. The local contractors have told the economy, they've told the assessment officials that there's a disincentive in older assessed valuations and neighborhoods for people to improve the outside of their homes. In Pennsylvania, generally speaking, improvements within the walls of the home that don't necessarily impact the value don't change the assessment. And there's a requirement for municipalities to give building permits and information on restructuring to the county to see if it affects, uh, affects assessed valuation. Oftentimes, extensions of properties, new additions, uh, improvements that that increase market value but are subject to assessment change, people are smart enough not to do that. I've seen situations where counties will recommend to citizens to buy a demolition permit at the same time they buy a building permit. One cancels the other out, the assessment doesn't change. You're demolishing an old part of the structure, you're putting up an identical structure, newer facilities, probably increasing your mortgage, probably increasing the value, the assessment doesn't change. Absent a current reassessment, assessments usually only change from improvements or new construction. And who does that more often than not? I've only bought a house once in the last 29 years. Most new construction occurs commercial industrial users on a countywide basis. That results in higher assessed valuation taxed at a higher millage rate. Because remember that millage rate is, re is in response to the inequitable assessments. It's not in response to the avarice of the uh, local official. It's a result of the mathematical imbalance in our assessment system. Valuation methods for commercial industrial users can consider income produced by their property if they go to appeal. That also results in a higher assessed value tax at a higher millage rate. It's a depressing, it, it, it increases inequity on the tax system, depresses uh, the incentive to expand or increase local businesses based on uh, the unfair impact of a tax bill. There's another ballot question, believe it or not. Every other place in Pennsylvania has a constitutional question. You, I think, have two questions on the ballot in Lackawanna County. Ironically, they both involve taxation. The other ballot question is one involving homestead exemption. Constitution was changed to allow exemption of properties for homestead. You notice that most likely in the reduction in your tax bill from gaming revenue. I know in Luzerne, my, mine's about $150 a year or so. There's a line on your tax bill, homestead exemption, it's a credit. Those are based on uh, 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 the change in the Constitution that allowed that. So some municipality school districts in particular they forgive a portion of the assessed valuation, so they lower your tax, uh, your tax bill. The question that's before the, the citizens this year is to change the way it's measured. Because currently you can ex exclude one half of the median assessed value of the property. So that means the county would determine what's the median value in your jurisdiction. That's 50% higher, 50% lower. And then you can only ex forgive 25, uh, half of that value. So if the median valuation is $50,000, the most you can uh, forgive is 25,000. And that's used to calculate the distribution of gaming money. And that's how you get your little, uh, your little tax decrease from, from gaming. And that also is why you, a, lot of, a lot of times you see people complaining, gaming came in, we didn't get any tax relief. Because the confusion was that it was gonna wipe out taxes. It wiped out a portion of your assessment, which results in lower taxes, and you'll see it on your tax bill as a credit. The new 
constitutional question is to wipe out 100% of the assessed valuation, effectively saying homestead properties will be exempt from taxation in a jurisdiction that adopts this program. That sounds really nice. It dovetails with the argument about elimination of school district taxes that we hear so much about. The trick on this one is you can only do it if the revenue is not replaced by increased millage. Because think about it, if you're lowering assessments on homes, the millage has to be increased to generate revenue. You are raising taxes on non-homestead properties. Second homes, vacation homes, commercial industrial properties, agriculture would all still be taxed because they won't be forgiven. So you've effectively walked away from the uniformity clause and you've changed the way you tax subject, subjects of taxation. You're now taxing people based on what the property is used for, not for the government services it provides or it, it, it's benefited from. What's the effect of that? County, school districts, and municipalities could exclude this if they have the uh, offsetting revenue. But there's a trick. School districts could increase earned income tax by referendum, I think, to offset the property tax loss. So in theory, they can raise the, prop the earned income tax on your earned income, which is attractive to retired people or people that are not subject to earned income tax. But the county doesn't have an earned income tax. The county's taxes cannot be affected by this unless the county lowers expenses or comes up with some other source of revenue which they don't have access to. And for municipalities, it would be very limited because most municipalities in Lackawanna County are not home rule and they have a 1% limit on their earned income tax, which they cannot raise. So there's limited use of municipalities. Top of my head, Scranton, Carbondale, the home rule municipalities could increase an already high earned income tax level to forgive taxes on some properties. Think about the, if this ballot question wins, the assessment doesn't happen, now you've got total inequality in Lackawanna County. Not only have you wiped out 100% of the assessed valuation for some people, but you've increased taxes on others to accomplish what essentially should be a, a neutral system. You're fixing the problem of increased millages and citizens discussed with higher taxes and the inability of the, of, uh, of the Commonwealth to provide funding for, for certain things by uh, giving them a Band-Aid to say, we'll forgive some taxes. It's not true tax reform. I think that's the last slide, right? So, I hope you've learned something or at least listened to our opinions on assessments. And if we have time for questions, put, put your hand up and Lynn will use the microphone so you can, you can hear your question. Could you explain briefly what qualifies as a homestead property? My, my non-lawyer way, it, it is the homestead that you live in. Uh, it's where you live. Uh, there's rules for it. Rental properties, I don't believe, are homestead. I don't believe second homes can be qualified. You have to pick. You, you, the, there, there's a form that most people filled out at the county where you designate the property as your homestead. Uh, some counties have had some controversy where the county's granted all properties the person owned a homestead exemption, they had to go back and retax those people. But generally speaking, it's what you designate as your homestead, and it's probably your primary place of residence. Um, looking at Luzerne County uh, and their reassessment, is there any evidence, I know in Lackawanna County, the fear is being taxed out of your home? Were there uh, elderly especially who were taxed out of their homes uh, when their taxes rose? I, I want to be careful with this because I'm, number one, I'm being recorded and it, those things come back to haunt you. But uh, anecdotally, uh, no. Um, my taxes, I own, I own 130, I'm a senior citizen, just so, let's, right? Uh, I own a 130 year old home. My assessment was based on my purchase price in 1986. I never paid more than $1,000 a year in taxes for county, school district, and municipal until the reassessment. I had five kids, kids went to school, you know, got police and fire service in my municipality. 
My taxes went up because my equity was restored. My street is full of senior citizens, one of the oldest neighborhoods in my town. Sure, there's griping about it. Some of their taxes went up, some went down. I was surprised to see my neighbors went down. I haven't seen that. I'm, it, the, the, the assessment is eight years old now. The appeals process has effectively been ended since about 2011. And yeah, people grouse about their taxes. And yeah, they, the sheriff's list in the paper is this long, but that's a function of the way counties in Pennsylvania allow you to skirt your taxes. Most people have to realize when the sheriff's sale list comes out in Luzerne County, a lot of those taxes, properties are removed from that list by paying a third or so of the, the, the oldest tax. Are people taxed out? I haven't seen evidence of that. I, I really haven't. I think maybe the social services agencies can answer that, but we, I haven't. And I do a lot of municipal work in Luzerne. Are people paying taxes fairly? I, I think they are. Uh, do people like paying taxes? No. You know, but to say that they're taxed out of their home, I think, is, a, is overly dramatic. It feeds into the narrative that millages and taxes somehow have to be abated and that there's some other way to pay for government services. Pennsylvania, since the state was started and the local taxation system started in the early 19th century, we decided we tax wealth. And wealth is, is assumed to be your earnings and your property value. It's time for a re-examination of what we define as wealth, perhaps, and it's time for a re-examination of how we provide for government services. But to ignore the problem because somebody says they don't want to pay that level of taxes and they're going to lose their home, that's a tough one. Um, I'm sympathetic to it because, you know, I understand a fixed thing. My, my parents lived to a very old age and their taxes became more and more of a problem. But they lived in the same house for 60 years. In a, in a dynamic market, some people will argue the cost of ownership should reflect what it really is and not be subsidized so that, you know, you adjust for circumstances. But, but I have not seen that, loser, And I don't know anyone that, 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 that makes that argument today, that, they're, they're, that senior citizens have been forced out of their homes. That argument is being made in Lackawanna County. Um, and that's one of the fears that people have. I used to do title searches before I retired. And I was made aware of how inequitable the system was. Uh, but at least in Scranton, where we have two systems of two parts to our tax, our, our real estate taxes, um, uh, improvements and land, at least then, uh, well, let's say 15 years ago, I could count on the equity of the land being pretty good. If you were living in a 40 by 150, piece of land in, in a, in a um, neighborhood. The other pieces of the same size were the same um, assessment. Now that is no longer true. I've been doing uh, spot searches around the city. So not only is Scranton being penalized, uh, people who live in Scranton being penalized by their total assessment, they're being penalized because some people's assessment is skewed because more of their assessment is on the improvement, which is a lower multiplier, than on their improvement, which is on their land, land which is a lower multiplier, mm -hmm. than on their improvement, which is a higher multiplier. So you can have the same assessment and be paying two different bills. I have looked at people owning homes of a longer period in the different neighborhoods and that does not seem to be, it, it seems to be that people are, the, the people who have owned their homes for longer don't seem to be paying lower taxes. In many cases, they're paying higher taxes. So I think the elderly, and I am in that mm -hmm. category right. myself, uh, have been, uh, and, and, and because most people don't um, challenge their assessments, and because people are afraid of having uh, their, their taxes raised, uh, I think a lot of elderly are suffering from overtaxation. They, they, they are on the, the that you make a good point. 
inequity cuts across all demographics. Right. Um, and it's truly a market-based system. And older homes where the market is no longer as vibrant as it was, mm -hmm. and those people are on, what you've hit on is the base year principle. A neighborhood in 1968 that was a desirable place to live may not be that in 2017, but they are assessed in principle at how it was in 1968. Right. So you have inequity, and you ha you, the, the point is the longer you live there, you may be suffering greater inequity and not understand it. Right. Most people don't understand the connection between assessments and millage, number one. In Luzerne County, on the other question, there was less um, public fear going into the reassessment because Luzerne's reassessment was triggered for a different reason. It was triggered by the inequity of the Salem nuclear plant getting special treatment under a court order that effectively, it should have been, I shouldn't say that, that's a judgment. In theory, it could have been the highest assessed valuation in the property. PPL used its constitutional right to appeal, which was a very high value based on what's the real value of a nuclear plant, it may be negative, and they settled for a lower assessed valuation. School districts in Southern Luzerne County and municipalities were waiting for this big assessment to happen, you know, this big tax windfall because it's a spot assessment, it wasn't reassessment, and it was taken away from them. County commissioners said, evidence of inequity right there, that should be taxed higher, the courts are not doing a fair thing to the citizens, they voted for a reassessment. It was only after the reassessment values came out where the impact of the staleness, so to speak, that they were 1965 base year. Mm -hmm. And the biggest complaints were from Harvey's Lake Borough, Penn, Penn Lake Borough, uh, which were resort areas now and were simply second homes and cottages, a four or five thousand dollar cottage in 1965 now with lakefront properties, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Those people in their individual municipal millage had a big increase in taxes, but they had a big increase in, in equity. They had a big increase in value. Otherwise, a lot of it was, you know, localized. Uh, there, there wasn't a lot of, of uh, there was arguments that people were going to lose their home, but we haven't seen it happen. I, and I think that's proof that equity means you could afford to live in your house and pay for your government services at the same level as your neighbors. So citizens understood that, yeah, I knew I was getting a free ride. I'd have to be crazy to appeal my $1,000 a year assessment or uh, taxes because appeals, they could be raised. So I just was happy taking the, I was happy taking the gift. But after assessment, I didn't march to the courthouse and say, I want you to lower my, fair is fair. Another thing that we noticed in our neighborhood was that certain properties um, are out of, so out of whack that they can't be sold, or it's very difficult I've to I've heard sell. that from realtors. It's that very Scranton, difficult to sell them. And, I've, heard, I've heard that from realtors that Scranton had, has a problem. We had friends who were looking at properties in our area, and, um, they did not buy a property because the taxes were too high, but they paid the same amount that was being asked for this property in another location, not too far away, right. um, because their, proper, their taxes were so much lower. Right, and it's the same property. Essentially, the same right. value in different areas of the same municipality can have widely different taxes. Think about the financial impact of that when you apply for a mortgage. Most homes have escrows. So if your taxes are unfairly higher for the same value of property, you can only borrow less because you have to escrow so much of your income to pay the taxes and then pay for your mortgage interest and principal. If you have lesser taxes in the same town with the same property, what happens? The town doesn't notice. The neighborhood deteriorates in value because people can't invest in the homes. They can't turn the homes over. The other neighborhoods are growing in value because while they're the same properties, you're getting a disparity in taxes, a disparity in the ability to afford things. If you can't afford things, generally prices go down right. because less people are chasing them. And even if the neighborhood itself isn't going down, that property probably the is property. Going you don't want to be, no one no. wants to be the owner of the highest value property right. in, in a bad neighborhood. Right. Right. And, but this is happening behind the scenes as assessments deteriorate the economic value of property. It, it's a complicated thing and it's, it's unfair to both homeowners and to government officials to say we shouldn't reassess because someone's taxes are going to go up. 
Someone's taxes will go up, some will go down, but equity will be restored. And equity is sort of what you want from government services. You don't want the fire truck to go faster to a rich person's house. You want them to travel the same speed. Um, we're going to take one more question, oh, and I think Jim will know. We'll take two more if you have time. She, yeah, she's had her hand up. Okay. Uh, with regard to sheriff sales in uh, Lackawanna County, we do have a county commissioner. Every time there's a list put in the paper, we'll say 1,900 homes were lost on sheriff sale, you know, creating the image of 1,900 property owners sitting there on the curb, which is not necessarily true. I had two aunts whose properties were in sheriff sale because they died and their children did not want the property. You know, and there were other people. I had a cousin who preferred to buy alcohol than pay his taxes, and his went up for sheriff's sale. So it's not, you know, poor little old widows, you know, or old farts like me, retired and disabled. This is a family show, Joe. Oh, Joe. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but, you know, the image of, you know, little old ladies, you know, that uh, are being, you know, chased by the nasty tax man sure. and are being put out on the street. And in those instances where you do have somebody who's paying for medicine instead of paying mm -hmm. their taxes, there are social services, as you mentioned, which apparently everybody seems to conveniently ignore, uh, number one. So, you know, to base policy uh, decisions on some few examples when the majority yeah. are bearing the burden is not correct. We need to, you know, help those few people who are in legitimate distress and straighten this mess yeah. out. To, to base public policy on the fear of the unknown is to base it on the boogeyman. And that's just not a good, it, facts are important. The League of Women Voters is doing this to provide facts. I hope my facts are accurate and they generally reflect assessment property uh, officials thinking. And that's how you make a decision based on the facts. I have, you I can't a, avoid unpleasant consequences, but we can make sure that equity is inherent in our system. I, I do have a question on how assessments in general work, whether or not we reassess or just how the system works. Um, if you live in a neighborhood and your next door neighbor's property is either severely blighted or condemned, mm -hmm. that affects your market value. How does that get absorbed into the assessed value of your property. Municipalities that have gone, counties that have re reassessed in the computer age, uh, generally buy a system where they're able to keep track pretty accurately of changing market conditions because they have access to the recorded market values for the deed transfers. So they can more accurately check where neighborhoods are deteriorating. Can't necessarily go in and reassess that neighborhood but they can use that information to determine where a, 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 at some point the countywide reassessment should be done or more of, provide more effective and fairer appeals. And is it correct to assume that if you renovate your kitchen or your bathroom, your taxes will automatically go up? It, it shouldn't. In New Jersey, some other states, every every improvement is considered a market value, but they, they do yearly reassessments in a sense. They re yearly. Yeah, but Pennsylvania, here, no, it's generally you the have larger. No fear of you should modernizing not. or you, you keeping your home in good repair. No, the inside, no. I mean, uh, if you're going to add an addition, that increases your value. Nothing is free. You know, if you're if you're getting an addition on your home and bigger living space, and you can afford to pay for that, your taxes should reflect that. But that's fairness. That's that's not a political question. Okay. Thank Got time. You. So I'm with the League of Women Voters, and we have been um, asking questions of both county commissioners who are in office and those who are running for office about whether or not we should reassess for probably mm -hmm. 12 to 16 years. Uh, at um, least. So what we've been hearing from the candidates frequently uh, and also from sitting commissioners is, oh, I think it's a good idea, but we can't pay for it. So two-part question, how does the county pay for it? And also, how do we prevent this lack of reassessment from recurring in the future if we can finally get them to reassess? Um, how do we make sure that it's not another, how many years has it been, you know, since uh, 50 years mm -hmm. since they do it? How do we keep it fresh? I, th I think they're related. Uh, modern assessment systems 
Luzerne paid, I think, seven or eight million for 300 some thousand properties in 2008 or so, 2007, 2008. Uh, modern assessment systems track much better than the paper and file system that, that older counties have. And with GIS, that's geographic information, overall mapping, Luzerne has phen phenomenal uh, 3D mapping where they can detect changes in, in, in properties that were improved and maybe the municipality lost the building permit or they weren't so good at sending the building permit up. Those kind of things can be used now to adjust someone's assessment if they should have been assessed higher with an improvement. So it, it, takes, it takes longer for inequity to creep in with a mod modern system and it takes, uh, it's easier to track it and, the re and to, to reassess later. Luzerne's on seven years now, and the debate is, should we reassess? They're getting close to, you know, the, 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 you know, the coefficient's 20 something, and their co the common level ratio is 110 or 115, so they're getting close to where maybe they want to reassess. And the cost that I've heard from the assessment office is under a couple million dollars, and it can be done by staff. So when you're, when you're putting a staff number on it, you're talking about part-timers coming in to augment the current staff, train them, and then do it over time. It's like everything else. If you let your house deteriorate to the point where the roof is leaking, the windows are broken, and your water is shut off, it takes a lot of money to get back to a condition where you can maintain your house in a good situation. And that's where these older assessment systems are. They're broken down, and it takes more to repair them. I, I, don't, know, uh, I don't know what the cost would be for, for Lackawanna, but the, the system they're buying could prevent that in the future. And the question, uh, Joan's point about the, the, the sheriff sale list and your point about what, what are we buying for it, uh, the sheriff sale list is the list of who's delinquent today. The real list is the one, either the, sheriff, the upset sale or the, the free and clear sale where people really do lose their properties. Okay, that's when, take a look at that. Generally the one is 20 pages long of delinquent people and then the, as people redeem their properties and pay their share, it shrinks to a point where there's much fewer, that's the sale to look at when people are really losing title to their home. That's, that's a severe government action. Um, I forgot the other one about uh, uh, what you were asking, but the, the, the question on the ballot is to incur debt. Strictly speaking, it's not to reassess. The requirement, the inequity, the duty of a county to provide accurate assessments remains. Lackawanna, Lackawanna County's question how to pay for it is similar to uh, Lancaster's County question when Lancaster was forced to reassess because of a lawsuit from the city of Lancaster. They asked their citizens, I don't remember if it was a public opinion poll, I don't think it was a, uh, it wasn't a referendum. They said, what do you want to do? Do you want to, we're, we're forced by the court to reassess. Do you want us to borrow the money and go in debt or do you want us to raise your taxes for three years and we promise at the end of those three years our taxes will go down. Well, you know what the good Amish folks said. No debt, raise our taxes, but promise they'll go down. And three years later, the county commissioners lower the rate of taxes to pay for the assessment. So it's up to the county how to pay for assessment, just like it's up to the county how to pay for a bridge repair or improvement to the prison or anything. It's a duty of the government. Now, how you pay for it is also a policy of the government. So you're, the question itself is not forgiving the equity it, it's, it's simply saying how we're going to pay for it. Ed? Quick question. Uh, I, have, uh, I have loaded on my computer uh, for tracking my finances, um, Quicken. And of course, Zillow, uh, once a month, it figures out what my value is mm -hmm. to, for my house so it can put my net worth. So if Zillow and the computer in the big world, the big spooky world out there knows the value of my house, how come the Lackawanna County doesn't and they have to spend a million bucks to figure out what everybody knows? I know my house, if they, Zillow says it's wrong, I send them a, re a correction and they'll fix it. The, so the, uh, you should be able to at least get a baseline. You, 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 two points. Yes, computers and market values and databases and all that good stuff, yeah, I could give you a good approximation of what your property is worth when you're house hunting and all that. They don't have the burden of having to defend that in court, and they don't have a zillion lawyers chasing them to say, you unfairly did it. So that's why the investment is important, just like the investment in anything you do in a local government has to be enough to stand the test of time and provide service. But once it's done, it's done. 
Okay, and the question before the voters is, do I want an equitable and fair tax system, or do I want to avoid debt and maintain the system we have? Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm retired military, and my last assignment I was in Virginia area. So when I get up here and bought a house in Dunmore, and I looked at the taxes they were charging me, I didn't, I didn't even have a hiccup, because I paid taxes in Virginia before. So um, if anybody around here thinks they pay too much taxes, all they have to do is move out somewhere else, and they whack it pretty hard. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I just would like to add um, that the whole assessment system in the state, and we've had some questions about um, going forward, what, do we, what can we expect to keep these current? One of the things with assessment and reassessment is that it's up to the county. There's no, um, there's nothing that, no state law that says a uh, county has to reassess at any particular time. And as you can see, what happens without that is the situation we have here with the great inequity. Um, we consider that one, just one symptom of the broken local government system that we have in Pennsylvania. There's many, many other examples of the broken local government system. Um, we have just come out with a new report on statewide municipal distress that delves into that and looks at uh, where our municipalities are in terms of their health. I'll tell you, it's not real good news. <laughs> um, and one of the things that we are hoping is that this will spark a discussion on the state level and that you know, hopefully we will see some improvements, some comprehensive improvements to our local government system. Um, but one of the ways that's gonna happen is if you people see the inequities and put pressure on your local legislators to make changes, because they're not gonna make changes unless they hear complaints. Um, and you can see our study at our website, which is www.pelcentral.org. Okay, thank you, Diana. That's uh, we're done. Or well, I don't know how we're running on time, and I don't. Uh, so I'm happy to answer questions. I just don't okay, know. Okay, last the, yeah, la last question. Could the city of Scranton sue the county? Yes. For reassessment? Yes. I think they should. Well, it, it's interesting. <laughs> I travel. My job takes me. Sometimes I swear it takes me to all 67 counties, but my primary focus is 40 counties, and I've done um, assessment and taxation work for the league since 1988. Uh, it's a, this has been repeated over and over again. Lancaster City sued Lancaster County. Dauphin was sued, Cumberland was sued. I don't think York was sued, but they were threatened. Typically what happens, and, and Lynn makes a good point, re remember equity is a personal thing that happens to you when your taxes go up. To the commissioners of a county, Reassessment is a very, very difficult decision. It does two things. It makes them spend money for no local benefit that they can show, and it may raise people's taxes. So that, that there's an allergetic reaction to that if you're a county commissioner. Across the board, in Luzerne County, the commissioners didn't jump up and say, we can't stand equity. The commissioner that voted ultimately changed his vote was adamant for years, we will never see reassessment because I'm waiting for the legislature. And you can check the archives of the, of the papers. The legislature has to face this problem, the legislature will change it. He finally gave up. And he switched his vote because the legislature is not going to change this. If they would change it, we wouldn't have the situation we have. Because this is a local political decision and statewide legislatures are very happy to let you decide the difficult questions on your own locally either by school board, city council, mayor, you follow me? So when you have a political decision that affects everybody, but the political consequences are centered on only three individuals, that's a heck of a lift to ask county commissioners. But the state is reluctant to mandate assessment because if you mandate five, six, seven million dollars bills per county, the state's gonna have to come up with that money. And then if you mandate it, you have to have rolling assessment that has to be maintained. Unfortunately, the, in Pennsylvania, we love our local governments. We love the diversity of local governments. We like the ability to vote for our local officials. That also means local responsibility. And the local responsibility is to maintain a fair and equitable tax base. 
And unfortunately, those political consequences, an educated population will not take it out on the local officials doing their job. Good government is good politics. Trouble is, all the fog and the haze about reassessment obscures the fact that it's the right thing to do when equity, inequity creeps into a point it is, where, where it's prejudicing the tax system. What else can you do? Thank you, Diane. I want to just, again, thank uh, the Pennsylvania Economy League Gerald Cross and Lynn Shedlock for coming today to enlighten us with, with a whole lot of facts. And we're truly grateful for increased understanding we now have. Thank you again.